Don't be putting trash in my dumpster. Well, I know he doesn't watch our videos. Yeah! Where did he go? Jesus! What's up guys? My name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. We're gonna have some fun today. We're gonna do 500 Magnum versus 4570 versus 450 Marlin. So, we have a Smith & Wesson Performance Center 500 Magnum with a 10 and a half inch barrel. And we have a Magnum Research BFR with a 10 inch barrel chambered in 450 Marlin. And then I have a cylinder that will change out with this revolver and it allows it to shoot 4570 as well. So we're gonna do all three. We have several different targets and have a several different types of ammunition to use today. We're gonna to start out with the pine board box. The pine board box holds 41 pine boards that measure three fourths of an inch thick. And we're gonna do something a little new. I have the chronograph set up. That way we can see how fast these rounds are moving when they hit our targets. Okay, we're gonna start out with the 500 Magnum and we're using some Underwood ammo, 500 grain hard cast. I'm about five yards back and we're about three yards away from the chronograph. One thousand four hundred and seven feet per second. Looks like we went through about 14 boards, but our bullet kind of deviated left. I purposely shot here on the far left so we have plenty of room for the rest of our rounds, but didn't work out the way I wanted to. So let's take one more shot. One thousand four hundred and thirty five feet per second. Okay, so here's where we hit the first time. Like I said, we went through about 14 boards. You can see the bullet ended up going left and hit the edge of this board. So I didn't really want to count that. So we shot one more time. Here's where we hit. It looks like we went through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So there's 17. We did not make it through number 18. So the 500 Magnum went through 17 bullets. And here's the bullet. It turns out I already had the 4570 cylinder in this revolver. So that's what we're going to do next. And we have some Underwood ammo, 430 grain hard cast, and these are plus P. 1,642 feet per second. Okay, here's where we hit. And it looks like we went through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, nope, 19. Let's see if I can get this out of here. I don't know if I can. It's pretty stuck. <laughs> but you can see we went through board number 19. And board number 20 does not have a hole through it. So the 4570 went through 19 boards. I don't know where the bullet went. I looked around on the ground and I don't know where it is. It bounced off somewhere. Let's move on to the 450 Marlin. Okay, now I got the 450 Marlin cylinder in this revolver. And we have some Buffalo Bore 430 grain hard cast. 1,564 feet per second. Okay, so here's where we hit, and it looks like we went through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It's weird, look at this. The bullet's going straight, and then all of a sudden it decides it wants to start going upward. I've never seen that happen before. So where do we stop? What, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19... 20, 21, stopped on number 21. I can't find that bullet either. Normally somebody will help me move this when it's completely full because it's really heavy. But I'm going to try it on my own. Hope I don't get a hurt of you. Oh God. Ugh. This is really heavy. Ugh. 
Oh goodness, that was heavy. Well, it looks like the 450 Marlin was the winner of the pine board test. Now let's move on to some cinder blocks. We're gonna start out with the 500 Magnum, and again, we have some Underwood ammo, 500 grain hard cast. One thousand four hundred and thirty feet per second. So it looks like the 500 Magnum went through one, two, three layers of concrete. It did not make it through number four. This is broken, but you can tell there's no sign of penetration on this. It just kind of broke it. So three layers of concrete for the 500 Magnum. Up next is the 450 Marlin. And again, we have some Buffalo Bore 430 grain hard cast. One thousand five hundred and thirty six feet per second. Okay, so we definitely went through one, two, three. Here's the bullet. I don't know about number four. Nope, I mean, it does not look it penetrated layer number four. So the 450 Marlin also went through one, two, three layers of concrete. Okay, now I have the 4570 cylinder in our BFR. And again, we're gonna be loaded up with some Underwood ammo, 430 grain hard cast plus P. I want a popsicle, it is hot. Woo! One thousand six hundred and fifty-eight feet per second, and I'll tell you what, I felt every bit of it <laughs> shooting that thing with one hand. Goodness. Okay, it looks like it went through one layer, two layer, three layers, but again, it does not look like it penetrated the fourth layer. It just broke it. So five hundred Magnum, four fifty Marlin, and forty-five seventy. All went through three layers of concrete. Okay, so now we're gonna shoot a piece of mild steel. It's one fourth of an inch thick. We're gonna start out with the 500 Magnum and we're gonna be using some Underwood ammo, 350 grain extreme penetrators. I have the piece of steel at a slight angle so if we have a ricochet, it should hit the ground. You will not see me shooting. I'm gonna be a little ways back off camera. I'm gonna be about 50 feet back. One thousand eight hundred and twenty one feet per second. Well, we did not make it through. It really wanted to though. <laughs> Check that out. Man, so close. But that bullet is lodged in that steel. Now let's see what kind of results we get with the 4570. We're gonna be loaded up with some Underwood ammo, 305 grain extreme penetrators, and these are plus P. One thousand eight hundred and fifty four feet per second. Okay, well, the forty five seventy three hundred and five grain extreme penetrator plus P went through that steel. <laughs> Man, that is awesome. It also knocked our uh, extreme penetrator from the five hundred magnum loose. Oh, dang, Whew, that's hot. There's our bullet. I can't believe I just picked that up. That steel chewed it up pretty good. And that thing is really hot, really hot. So now we're gonna hit the steel with the 450 Marlin. But here's the problem. We used extreme penetrators for the 500 Magnum and the 4570. I don't have any extreme penetrators for the 450 Marlin and pretty sure Underwood Ammo doesn't even make extreme penetrators for the 450 Marlin. But I'll tell you what we do have I have some Buffalo Bore ammunition, 500 grain full metal jackets. I'm really curious to see what happens. <laughs> 1,488 feet per second. So we did not make it through, but we left a pretty big bulge. And it threw that piece of steel backwards really hard. <laughs> That 500 grain full metal jacket is really big and it's moving kind of slow. The extreme penetrators we use for the 500 Magnum and the 4570 are lighter bullets and they're moving really fast. 
So let's give the 450 Marlin one more shot. And this time we'll use a Buffalo Bore 430 grain hard cast. 1,544 feet per second. So that time the 450 Marlin made it through the steel. Pretty impressive. Okay, now we're gonna finish up with some water jugs. I have nine water jugs set up. We're gonna start out with a 500 Magnum, and we're gonna be loaded up with a double tap, 275 grain Barnes XPB. One thousand nine hundred and ninety three feet per second. So here's number one, and it pretty much exploded. Two, three, four, and it looks like we made it into number five. So we went through four and we stopped in number five with the 500 Magnum. That is beautiful. <laughs> Next up is the 4570. And we're gonna be loaded up with a double tap, 300 grain Barnes TSX. We didn't get a reading on that one. So we had one, two, three, four, Five, six, well, it looks like we came through the side of five and we cut into number six. <laughs> There's a nice cut through it. There's no bullet inside there. I don't see a bullet on the table. I do see a piece of a bullet though. What sucks is we don't have enough water jugs to do that again. I've got enough for the 450 Marlin, so that's just gonna have to be our result with the 4570. So we're gonna go ahead and finish up with the 450 Marlin. Now we used a Barnes hollow point for the 500 Magnum and the 4570. Well, I don't have any Barnes bullets for the 450 Marlin, and I don't even have a hollow point for the 450 Marlin. I have a full metal jacket, a hard cast, and the closest thing I do have to a hollow point or something that will expand is this Buffalo Bore 405 grain flat point. Wow. Well, I got water all over my chronograph. That's not good. 1,787 feet per second. Okay, so we had one, two, three, four, five, six. Mmm, well that sucks. We went into number six, came out the back of number six, but the bullet deviated and did not end up going into number seven. So we do not have a bullet for the 450 Marlin either. I wonder what happened if I slam these together as hard as I can. <laughs> Whew, that feels good. It was hot today. Well, that's it for today. I had a lot of fun, even though it was really hot. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about using the chronograph. Do you like that? Do you want to see how fast the bullet's moving when we shoot stuff? Or do you not care and you just want to see stuff get blown up? Let me know in the comment section down below. Be sure and give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. If you're a new subscriber, make sure you hit that little bell at the top. It's going to give you notifications when we upload new videos. Today I'm rocking my Tilva Hollow Project t-shirt. We are partnering with them. Anytime you purchase a shirt or a sweatshirt, not only do you support the channel, but you also support them and their cause. They're some really cool guys, and they're doing some really great things. Be sure and check them out, and check out Kentucky Ballista's clothing. I'll leave a link in the description down below. I want to say thank you to our friends over at Underwood Ammo, Double Tap Ammunition, and Buffalo Bore Ammunition for supplying us with the ammo used in today's video. If you want to check them out, you can't find links in the description anymore because it's against YouTube's policies, but you can find links to them on my website, KentuckyBallistics.com. And be sure to check out Kentucky Ballistics on Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
Links to those are in the description down below. Again, my name is Scott. Thank you for watching Kentucky Ballistics, and I'll see you next time.